The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OA Now here. I'm Sammy Termina, blogger around the OA, one of the hosts of Last Day Brain Cells and the host of Between Terminus and Oriented Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Oriented Television. We've got a lot to talk about this week, obviously. Basketball season underway. We just got started with boys basketball. Um, starting to get an idea where each um, team lies right now early on into the season. Girls basketball, we're still early on. Obviously, um, league play starts this week for them. Um, a couple big ones to really look at and preview. Um, obviously, two of them to keep a real close eye on. One in the red and the other one in the um, white. Of course, um, those are some big games that are looming this week. Um, there's some teams we really haven't judged yet. Um, and also, we're going to talk also, does um, does basketball showcases, do they work for you? Or do, or do you think teams should schedule strategically and I think that's something that's a good debate topic for something to really watch for um we're gonna look at the top 23 we're gonna talk girls first um then we're gonna go boys um when you look at the girls side of things this weekend I mean this week people are gonna look at obviously West Bloomfield's game against some South Bend Wash against South Bend Washington um that was a heck of a game over at Belleville on Saturday afternoon um it was a um South Bend, Washington beat West Bloomfield um, 70, 86 to 74. It was a really good game between both teams. Um, Summer Davis led West Bloomfield with 29 points. Um, but now the big question here goes with um, with West Bloomfield is, you know, when you look at the Lakers, people are going to say, okay, um, yes, they're very talented. We know they have both Davis sisters. We know they have both Hendrick sisters. Um but it comes down to depth, and obviously, you know, West Bloomfield, they trailed early, um, came back, tied it up, led a couple times, and then, um, but South Bend, Indiana, but South Bend and Washington, Indiana had an answer. I mean, there's a reason why they're the top team in the state in Indiana. People are going to say, obviously, um, you know, heck of a game, you know, between the two top teams in the state of Michigan, West Bloomfield, um, and, um, and um, South Bend, Washington, Indiana, people are going to say that. I mean... But when you look at how the game is described in detail, you're going to have to really look at, obviously, with West Bloomfield is, do they have enough depth? I mean, that is the big time question for Coach um, Daryl McAllister. I mean, I've said this for weeks. You know what I mean? West Bloomfield's biggest weakness is going to be depth. And, you know, when you look at when they get back in the state, when the playing in the state, obviously, you know, that's how teams, you know, are going to really look at exposing West Bloomfield. I mean, you know, maybe... You know, obviously, you know, Rockford tested him last year. And then you look at now, you know, but for West Bloomfield, you know, if they would have went undefeated, I don't, I think this might have been a good thing for West Bloomfield to take a loss right now. Because when you lose games, it teaches you, you know what I mean, that you can't take anything for granted. And I think this might be a good thing for West Bloomfield that, yes, they lost, but, you know, it's a, you know, it's, it's a, message board point and says, okay, you can't take anything for granted um, with what everything's been going on. And West Bloomfield really, you know, yes, they played a tough schedule. They played two games um, dominant against South Lion East and then this game. Um, so really when you look at West Bloomfield, I mean, like, they're still that good. They're still dominant. Um, and right now when I look at West Bloomfield, I mean, they're the team, you know, that a lot of people, you know what I mean, pick the re likely repeat of state champions. Do they have a chance to do it? Sure. I mean, but you know, there's some teams in the way that could, that could do some things. I mean, like, you know, when you look at, you know, when you look at it, especially when you look at the red, I mean, you got some good teams in that division. I mean, Lake Ori in there, you got Rochester, you got, you know, I mean, you got, um, you know, Clarkston's a player, Stony Creek's going to be a player. Um, you know, so I'm curious to see what happens. Um, you know, and also Groves might be a player as well, but I'm curious to see what happens, you know what I mean, how West Bloomfield responds um, to a loss like this. Um, really curious to see what how they respond. I mean, that's going to be the key um, as we start league play. Um, I mean, West Bloomfield, they still got a lot of showcase games still to go. Um, I know they got Ypsilanti Arbor Prep coming up. and I, I mean, like, that'll be really interesting. Um 
obviously, you know, they, they're coming off a tough loss. I mean, like, some of these teams have been, you know, when you look at the top teams around the state, have had some really tough losses. I mean, Midland Dow's been blown out twice. Um, um, obviously, you look at Birmingham and Marion, they're not the same team they've been. I mean, they had a lot. They lost to Oxford, then they lost to Emily City. That was a shock. Um, so, you know, some of these teams around the state, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, I mean, maybe change the guard. I don't know. I mean, we'll see. I mean, we will see what happens. Um, other teams have been really impressed with, um, I want to talk Blue Field Hills because when you really look at the Blackhawks, they're coming off that tough loss to see home early on in the year. Um, but they had a 19.4 quarter and almost won that game. They lost that game by one point, 56-55, but they have bounced back and won their last two games pretty convincingly. Um, yes, against um, Detroit Cody, and, um, you know, they, I mean, like, Bloopia Hills is really starting to figure some things out. They're starting to get some wins, which is a good thing. Um, now, when you look at the blue division, obviously, when you look at the blue, there's a great chance I think Bloopia Hills is going to win maybe at least 14 games. I mean... I'm not being mean to you here, but there's a great chance. I mean, when you really look at the division right now, um, in that division, Pontiac's not very good. Pontiac's 0-4. You look at, yeah, Oak Park's coming off a win against Troy Martin Luther King, but they're not the same team they used to be. Um, then you look at Ferndale. Ferndale hasn't even played a game yet. Um, Ferndale University. I mean, they've been, they've been, a, I mean, they've been blown out twice. Avenel hasn't been the same team since that, since the um, six-player technical foul that they got against Warren Mott. I mean, they haven't been the same team. Um, and the only other team that really is going to challenge them is um, Farmington. Um, Farmington, yes, they didn't look good against North Farmington the other night. I mean, they scored 11 points, but they're, I mean, like, they're going to be okay. I mean, I'm not, I'm not easily worried about Farmington. But with Bloom Bay Hills, I mean, clearly, they are clearly the best team in this league. I mean, they are clearly... Um, I think the Blackhawks, you know, in the division, I mean, not the league, but division, but I, I think when you look at Bloopy Hills and you figure out, okay, here's a team that, you know, they've got some, they got some proven players. I mean, Ashley Forner, you got, um, I mean, I mean, she's really had a nice start. Ruby Smith has been solid for them. Um, so there's a lot to like with coach Kristen Massey's program, a lot to like. Um, obviously when you look at, when you look at Bur at Bloopy Hills, I mean, like, yes, you know, they need, I mean, like, do I think, could they make a divi a district run in the postseason? I mean, that district's looking tough. I mean, obviously you got Birmingham Marion there, but they're not the same team that they used to be. Seahome will be tough. Groves will be solid. Um, but when you're judging teams right now, Bloopy Hills to me looks like clearly to me the best team in the blue. Um, with the way that they're playing, um, they're, they're playing just outstanding basketball right now. Um, Farmington, they're playing okay. Um, but bottom line is, um, you know, I, 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 it's hard for me to judge this division because a lot of those teams have really been struggling. I can't judge Ferndale yet. They haven't played a game yet. Um, but Ferndale University, they've been blown out twice. Um, avondale has been blown out three of the four times they've, they lost. Um, Pontiac's been blown out four times. Um, and then um, Oak Park, yes, they got that win against King. But, you know, but I, I just don't know if I can trust Oak Park going forward um, with the um, with what's been going on. So a lot to really look at when you look at the blue. Um, but right now, clearly to me, the two top teams are Bloomby Hills and Farmington right now in that division. Um, let's go to the white division, obviously. Um, this is, I think, going to be really interesting right now when I look at this division. Yes, Oxford is the clear favorite, but they didn't look good against North Branch. And I think a lot of that, when you look at the game against North Branch, was they, a lot of people look at, obviously, when you have a, when you have, like, a big emotional win like it, like they did against Birmingham Marion, and then not playing in a week, you know, you tend to be a little rusty, um, and then all of a sudden, like, you know, you know, you're in a really tough game with North Branch. You're only in a two point game, needing to survive that game. Um, I don't know if if it was a mental lapse that they had. Um, 
or if North Branch is very good. Um, but still, I mean, like, it's very unusual to see an Oxford-like team only score 38 points, you know, and had to survive against a, um, a North Branch team. You know, when you look at the Blue Water Conference, um, you know, they're, they're decent. I mean, I think they could do well in that conference. I mean, but I just think that, you know, with Oxford, you know, you didn't expect that to, you know, happen, have a mental lapse. And I think that's clearly what happened with Coach Rachel Byers' team is they had a mental lapse and they really struggled. And it showed, yes, they won the game, but I think there could be some concerns when you look at Oxford going forward, um, especially with the mental lapses that they have, um, the issues they have, um, you know, but. That's going to be the key for Coach Rachel Byer to fix this is the mental assets considering who they've got coming up. I mean, who they still got to play. I mean, like, you know, that's not counting the division, obviously. Um, but when you look at Oxford right now, I mean, like, they're still right now the king, the queens of the white right now. But, you know, you got North Farmington who, who played really well against Farmington the other night, um, 52-11 that game. Um Really, when you look at the Raiders, we're going to know a lot about them this week. Um, Troy Athens is another team we're going to know a lot about this week. Um, I think on Friday is going to be a big one for them when they head to North Farmington. Um, and that'll be a big one. That'll be a game we're going to talk in a little bit. We're going to preview that one. Um, but when I look at when I look at North Farmington, obviously, you know North Farmington. I think. I think they're strategically scheduling as well. I mean, like, you know, I think they're strategically scheduling, um, you know, just playing some teams that you know that they're going to beat. Um, I think A&T, I think it kind of was a toss-up game. Um, but North Farmington ended up finding a way to win that game. Bottom line was, I think the Raiders are, you know, they're better than what they are, but I just don't know if I can trust them yet. I mean, when you look at their district in the future, obviously Farmington's Mercy is rolling. They are clearly one of the best teams in the Catholic League. Um, they have a very good player, Maya White. I mean, really, you know, to, de to describe that, you know, bottom line is there. it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with them. It really is um, when you look at the Raiders. Um, Troy Athens, of course, they're playing really good basketball as well. I mean, I think the play of Skylar Emerson has been a big deal. I mean, I really like what Coach Stacey Klump has done. I mean, you know, when you look at Troy Athens, you know what I mean? They're at four wins. I mean, they just beat their arch rival Troy um, on the road. And with the way that Troy Athens is playing right now, um, I mean, they're, I mean, like, they're getting a lot of confidence. They're getting a lot of belief with one another. Rebecca Delilah's been playing good basketball. Abby Malone's been playing good basketball. Um, you know, and I think, you know, obviously it starts and ends with Skyler Emerson. I mean, that's a whole credit where credit's due to Coach Stacey Klump. I mean, it really is. Um, so when you look at a team that's been red hot right now, it's been Troy Athens. Um, a team that really has not been hot in this division has been Adams. I mean, people are going to say, well, why Adams? I mean, yes, they're coming off a win against Lapeer. Um, but they had some really tough losses. I mean, they were blown out by Rochester. Um, but they had a one-point loss to Rochester, Lutheran Northwest who did not have their two top players. Um, Emily Grunke is one of the best players in the state, and she didn't play in that game because of an ankle. Um, and then they had another one who didn't play. And Adams ended up losing that one 31-30. I mean, that is a tough way to go for Adams, really is. Um, but they're a young team. I mean, Morgan McPherson has been playing good, playing good basketball for them. Um, they're going to have to win games on defense, obviously. And I think that could be a problem for coach um, Joe Malberg. Um, if they can get their defense situated, I think they're going to be fine. I really do. Um, and when you look at other teams in the division, obviously see home, I'm really concerned with them. Berkeley. I'm really concerned with Berkeley. Though. You know, they're and two right now. They have to win both games this week. I, I, I think they have to win both games. Um, just to have their season turned around. I mean, this is not what people expected. Obviously, the loss to the Royal Shrine was a um, mind-boggling. My, it was mind-boggling. Bottom line. I mean, it's hard to describe the Bears right now with, with Coach Cody Faulkner's team. I mean, it really is. 
Um, obviously, I've heard the stories. I've heard the rumors. I mean, like, but bottom line is for the Bears, if they want to fix this, they've got to start playing. And if they don't, they're in some trouble. Um, when you look at other teams in the division, you can't ju- you can't judge Harper Woods yet. Um, they haven't played a game yet. Um, you also can um, but when you look at other teams in the division, obviously, um, you know Oxford's still the best team in this division. But North Farmington's there. Troy Athens has been playing good basketball. Um, when you look at um. When you look at the other teams in the division, obviously, um, you know, we talked to Adams already, um, Harper Woods, obviously, Seaholm, obviously. I mean, when you look at them, they're one and two, right? I mean, they're one and two right now. Um, there are some concerns when I look at the Maples. Um, and then there's Royal Oak. I think Royal Oak's been playing really good basketball. Um, I really like that they've been getting back to what has identified them, which is defense first. Um, they have a star player in Lydia Dickens who I think is ready to make the next step. Um, they got Lucy Furtags, another player I really like. Um, but there's others I like on that team for Coach Brian Zapata. I mean, there really is. Um, Royal Oak, I mean, they're coming off a good win against Royal Oak Shrine. Um, when you look at the Ravens, um, they've got to get back to that defense first mindset. They do look out. Because I think they can give some teams problems. I, I just think they could really, really give some teams some fits. And I think they could. I mean, Royal Oak's a team that, you know, when when motivated, um, when they're on their game, um, they're they're as good as advertised. I mean, their only loss of the year was to Wall Lake Northern. And Wall Lake Northern, I've said was the best team in Lakes Valley right now. And they truly have proven my point that they are one of the best teams in the Lakes Valley. I think they are the best team in the Lakes Valley right now. Um, but when I look at the division right now, if I have to say something about it right now, I would have to say right now, Oxford's still the top team, then it's North Farmington, then Troy Athens, Royal Oak, um, Seaholm, Harper Woods, um, and then Troy, and then Rochester Adams. Um, right now, but that could change. I mean, obviously, it's a long year, obviously. I mean, I mean, the league is still in play. League play starts this week. Um, we're going to preview a couple of those games, uh, especially there's one big one uh, with North Farms and Troy Athens. We're going to preview that one um, coming up in a couple minutes. Um, and let's go to the red. I mean, we've already talked West Bluefield. Um, let's talk Lake Orion. I mean, when you look at the Dragons, I, th- I think they're strategically, you know, they're quietly going on their business. I mean, when you look at the Dragons, I think schedule-wise, they've been really strategic. I mean, you know, getting your depth, a ton of time to play. Um, I think that's a good thing for Coach Bob Bridges. You know, giving your, giving your um, reserves, you know, the time that they deserve, a ton of, of opportunity to play. I think that's been a good thing. Um, Stony Creek, you know, last two games, they had blowout wins. Same thing. Um, obviously we're going to find out a lot about Stony Creek when they play North Farmington coming up. Um, that'll be a tough matchup for them, but Stony Creek, obviously with Sydney La Prairie, you got, um, no, with Sarah La Prairie, you got, um, you got a Mia Carson, Emily Flynn. Um, and then, um, obviously play Merrick Stahlback, the play of Lily Solick. Um, you know, when you look at Stony Creek, they've been rolling. They've been clicking on all cylinders. I mean, Lake Orion, you know, when you look at the Dragons, obviously play Izzy Wachinski, that's been a big deal. Um, I think she's a wild card for the Dragons. I really do. Um, Clarkston, when you look at them with the Wolves, obviously, they're a much different team without Ellie Roback. I mean, that is clearly a difference, and that was proven against Chelsea. Um, Chelsea, yes, they're a good team. They're a very good team. I mean, I don't know about Macomb, Dakota this year. I just don't know about them if they're for real or not. Um, yes, Clarkson won by two against them. Um, but I, I, there's some question marks with Clarkson. I mean, not a deep team, obviously, when you look at the, when you look at the lineup that they have. They got some proven players, but they're a much different team without Ellie Roback. And, you know, she... 
got she had a concussion. Um, I expect her back this week. Um, it'll be really interesting to see what happens. Um, and I know they got a big one with Lake Orion Lumen. Um, they got a tough one with Seaholm. That's a trap game for them. Um, coming up. Um, but when you look at when you look at Clarkston, um, obviously uh, Abraham Hernandez has played really well for them. But the key for me is going to be LA Roback because Roback's the one that keeps the engine going because she was very, very evident in their game against Saginaw Heritage. She was really evident against Heritage. Um, you know, so that is a big, big deal. I mean, that is going to be a big deal. Um, so when you look at Clarkston, here's a team that could do. Here's a team that could really make some noise. You know, I mean, they could make some noise, but when you look at the division, um, I, I just think, you know, if Clark's, Clark's a real different team without Roback. They clearly are. And then there's Rochester. I mean, Rochester, they're starting to get their act together ever since the um, the disaster against um, Farm Tales Mercy. Um, in that one, it was 33-30. Or they lost that one. Obviously, Alice Mack's been a big, big player for them. Kylie Robinson's been playing solid. Um, and then you have, um, I think Ava Williams has played well. Stevie Norgrove has played well. Um, Abby Pleasant's played well. I mean, I mean, like, they're, um, I mean, like, Coach Bill Thurston's got a good team. I mean, he does. I know they still got some point guard issues they got to address. I mean, Lena Webb right now is filling the role right now. I mean, but they're starting to click a little bit on all cylinders, which is a good sign for them. Really is this early in the year. Then there's Groves. Um, obviously, that tough loss in Novi, they bounced back with two good wins. Um, you know, they're, um, I know they got a, they got a really good um, guard in, in Miss Little here. Um, she's played really well. Um, when you look at Groves, I mean, like, coming off two wins that they needed, um, and I think that's strategic scheduling right there. I mean, knocking off Seaholm, that's a big deal right there. Um, knocking off, um, you know, and then, of course, I think it knocked off Redford Thurston. Um, obviously, that's going to help a team like them, you know, get them ready, get them some competence. And for a team that needs a lot of competence right now, I think Groves does need a ton of competence right now. If they can get that, I think that's going to be a big-time um, – Big time um, situation for them going forward. So right now at Groves, um, you know everything's fine with them. I wouldn't press the panic button on them right now. Um, Safi Arson Tech. When you look at them, yes, they're starting to score, but they're giving up a lot. Um, it's a double edged sword with the Warriors. It really is. Um, just describing them. Um, yes, Christian Banks is a very good player, um, but. They've got a lot of work to do. They've got to figure out who they are. Are they going to be an offensive first team or are they going to be a defensive first team? That's the big question when I look at A and T. It was last year when they were a good team when they blew out when they blew out good teams and when they and the, no when they blew out bad teams and they and then they lost to good teams via blowout. That was last year. Now you know it's figuring out. Okay, do you want to be an offensive te first team or do you want to be a defensive first team? That's a good question for Coach Kriya Coltrane. That's a really good question for them. So that's something to really figure out with them. I mean, it really is. Um, and then on the um, and then there's Troy. I mean, obviously Troy's coming off a really tough loss to um, Troy Athens. I mean, they've really they've been three and two. I mean, they've been really treading on water as of late. Um, you know, had that win against Farmington, and then of course losing to Troy Athens. Um, it's gonna get really really tough for them, um, scheduling wise once they get in the red play. So obviously. Diamond Prince, um, Reg and Zyder, um, you know, Charlotte Gillian, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with Troy um, going forward there. Um, the two games I will be keeping an eye on this week, um, obviously there's some good ones. There's three good ones to keep an eye on. Um, North Farmington, Stony Creek, that'll be really interesting. Matchup with two teams that have, um, you know, really similar um, great coaching match between um, Coach Kellen James and Coach Jeff Simpson. Um, the matchup between Sarah Luffler and Sarah LaPrairie. Um, also, Penelope Crary going up against um, Mia Carson. Um, I think the play, if it's going to come down to, I think the match is going to come down inside between um, 
Jihad and also I'm um, Lily Solak. I think that's going to come down to that. Um, bench play, I trust Stony Creek right now more in that game um, because of the, you know, and, and also it's at Stony Creek. So that'll be really interesting between the Cougars and the Raiders. Um, that'll be a really interesting game um, to really watch for, especially bo how both teams like to run that um, full court trap that they like to do. The, the two the two two one full court trap um, that both teams like to do. So I'm very curious to see what happens in that matchup between the Raiders and, of course, Team Fine Bomb. Um, what I always call Stony Creek. Um, and I think Stony Creek, you know, when you look at the Cougars, this would be a good test for them. I mean, big week for Stony Creek. Um, then, you know, cause they got a tough one coming up. I mean, like it'll be really interesting. I mean, North farm, they got, they got two, they got two big ones. Um, and speaking of the Raiders, I want to talk about that matchup, obviously with, um, Troy Athens on Friday. That one's going to be really interesting because two teams that are, you know, we don't know if North Farms is going to be undefeated coming in, but I'm pretty confident Troy Athens will because um, they do play Pontiac. Um, you know, they should have no problem with them. Um, I'd be shocked if they did. Um, but when you look at this matchup, obviously the matchup I'm looking forward to seeing is Skylar Emerson against um, against Sella Luffler. Um, and then it's going to come down to um, can Ellie Musco... Um, find her shooting touch against North Farmington going up against Penelope Carreri. Um The inside match between Rebecca Delilah and um, Jihad there. And then you have Abby Malone, I think, has got a really interesting matchup with um, Eliza Miller. Um, with Eliza Muller, that'll be really interesting. So a lot of interesting pieces, a lot of interesting storylines. If it comes down to depth, it comes down to bench play right now. Um, you know, I kind of really hard to trust North Farmington. But, uh, you know, but it's in North Farmington, and you know that if you're Coach Stacy Klump, you're likely not going to get a lot of calls at, at that gym in the Norgo Dome. Um, obviously, you know, considering the history, the aura of North Farmington basketball, um, you know where that's going to go. And I think, you know, that's going to be a tough match for Troy Athens, um, you know, taking on a Raiders team that, you know, they are, um, you know, if, Let's say if North Farmington's coming off a loss, I mean, like the Stony Creek, you know, they're going to be motivated. But if they're coming in undefeated, that's going to be a really interesting matchup, to say the least, in that one there. Um, and the other one I'm keeping a really eye, close eye on is Lake Orion and Clarkston. Um, and the reason's simple. Um, I think this could be Clarkson's biggest test because when you look at Clarkson, obviously, you know, yes, you have Ava Hernandez, you have um, Ellie Roback, you have... Um, Claire Walker, you have them, um, you know, I mean, <coughs> if, and then you're going up against a team in Lake Orion, obviously with a lot of experience when you look at um, Maddie Eber, Chloe Wiegers, um, Taylor Dinda, Jody McCaffrey, um, Grace Sullivan, um, and just the proven players that Coach Bob Bridges can put in there. I mean, I mean, like, obviously, when you look at, the matchup, obviously, I'm curious to see how Audrey Wishmeyer does in this game. Because last year, Wishmeyer absolutely tortured Clarkson at with their three-point shooting. I mean, like, I will be very curious to see what happens. I mean, like, you know, so we'll see what happens. I mean, like, I think it'll be really interesting to see how um how Clarkson does uh, guarding Wishmeyer. Um, and if it comes down to a depth game, I think it's going to favor Lake Orion. Because, you know, who Lake Orion can bring. I mean, they could bring several key players off the bench. And also the player I'm watching is also AZ Wachinski. I mean, like, I, I mean, Wachinski, I know, has been getting a lot of attention all year long for Coach Bob Bridges' team. Um, she will be one to really watch for um, in this matchup. It, it's, a, it's a great storyline because you know that the Wolves and Dragons are liking to see each other three times considering the districts, you know what I mean? They're both in the same district. Um, the districts at Clarkston, I know Lake Orion's going to be motivated, especially because the regionals at Lake Orion. Um, and then, so a lot of storylines, you know, brewing between the Dragons and the Wolves. And it's really interesting that both these two teams are going to be playing um, opening night on a Friday night. Um, going to be really interesting to see what happens there in that game between the Dragons and the Wolves and that Friday in Lake Orion. Um, when you look at, obviously, the top 23 Shows the ranking show itself, and you know when you look at the um, 
The thoughts, obviously, they're on the blog as well at second of 4650 at blogspot.com. I've also put a, put a link into the Owen TV blog as well. It's also there as well. So, you know, when you look at the girls' basketball thoughts, obviously, you know, it's a good way to describe what's been going on around the league this year in girls' basketball this year. Um, let's go now from the girls. Let's talk the boys. Um, boys' basketball, obviously, the first week of the year, kind of, it's kind of messy. You know what I mean? Really is to you know, to describe how things are going. Um, obviously, when you look at the rankings, um, kind of, you know, it kind of, it's hard to judge teams right now, especially early on, especially when a lot of the league has, has at least a couple wins on the docket. Um, obviously, you know, the best team in the league right now has to be North Farmington with the way that they played against um, Detroit Edison and Detroit Martin Luther King. They've looked dominant. Um, Ryan Hurst has been good. Landon Williams has been good. Um, Prince Jackson's been good. Um, Tyler Spratt's played well for Coach Todd Negotian. I mean, like you look at you look at the Raiders, what they've been doing. I mean, obviously, yes, they played in a couple. Sh- they played in two showcase games. Um, and you know, to me, I'm not a big fan of showcase games, and I think there's a reason why. Um, and I know um, it's been a tough debate describing it because. You look at, obviously, you know, if you're playing your freshman JV varsity, you know, that's fine. You know what I mean? That is fine. And then you when you're, when you're playing a showcase game, you're playing in front of college recruits. You're playing in front of, you're playing in front of, um, of media. You know, you're playing, like, it's something that can be really dangerous. I mean, like, you know, you're, and you're not on a set schedule. I mean, you're looking at teams playing, like, at 1240 or, like, 1, 1 o'clock or, like, 3.40 or 8.30 at night, you know what I mean, on a school night, you know what I mean, that's, that could be difficult on a student athlete, I mean, really can, um, you know, also I see a lot of teams play on Saturdays, you know, just to, um, you know, and, you know, and a lot of these kids, I know a lot of them like to use their weekends and, you know what I mean, to rest up, you know, get ready for school on that Monday, you know, practice on a weekend, you know, but I mean, that's, that's how life is, but, you know, but it is what it is. I mean, like, I know we got the Christmas break coming up. We got the um, MLK class. We got the um, we got the round ball classics coming up over at um, Westfield Prep and Ferndale. I mean, like, we're going to preview those in a couple weeks. Um, and you got several teams that are going to be on two-week breaks. So, you know, so that's something to really watch for. I mean, like, it's a good debate topic. You know what I mean? Is Should teams use their two-week breaks, you know what I mean, go on two-week breaks or keep playing, you know what I mean? I mean, there's really no wrong answer. There's really no wrong answer about, you know, either side of the debate. Um, but back to North Farmington. I mean, it's clearly, to me, clear as day that they are the best team in this league. Um, obviously, the Raiders are a team. I mean, they're, they're going to be they're gonna be a tough out for anybody. I mean, they're going to be a really tough out. They've got size. they got dribble drivers. you got a proven score in Ryan Hurst. Um, you got a proven defender in Prince Jackson. You got Tyler Spratton cost play defense. Landon Williamson playing well. I mean, they're going to be a tough out. I mean, they really are. Um, Ferndale to me is really interesting because yes, they're coming off two tough losses. They're th- they're five points away from being three, and I mean, they lost a tough one to UAD Jesuit. They lost a tough one early on in the early on, um, in the week to university prep. Um, I just think with Ferndale, and then they had a bounce back win against Detroit West against them Detroit. Um, I gotta remember my teams here with Ferndale, but you know they had a bounce back win the other night. Um, I think when you look at Ferndale, um, obviously it's gonna be tough replacing the two players they lost and um Jason Drake and um Travion Lewis, but you know um I, they got some playmakers who can do it. I mean. For Coach Juan Rickman, obviously depth's a big concern for them. Um, they're big. Obviously, they got some proven shooters as well. Um, for Coach Juan Rickman. Um, but I'm very curious to see what happens with them. I mean, like they're playing a very difficult schedule. Um, I think, you know, if it comes to postseason time, and I know Coach Juan Rickman, I would give my message to Juan Rickman, Coach Rickman here. I would say, please play the district at your home gym. Because I know it still says host needed. Um, just ask your athletic director, Sean Butler. I know him very well. 
just have the district that you're home for. I think it'll be good for you. I really do. Um, but with Ferndale, obviously, you know, I mean, like, you know, the record's very deceiving right now. I mean, they're still a very good basketball team. I mean, that's bottom line. Um, Oak Park coming off a win against them, um, coming off a big win. Um, they didn't look great. Um, they looked really spotty. Um, they were tied at 39 for at the end of the third quarter. They were tied at 16 as well at half. Um, but there's some concern warning signs with Oak Park. I think there's some warning signs um, to really watch for them. Um, Adams, I can't describe them yet. Um, Clarkston, you know, when you look at the Wolves, obviously, yes, they came off that win against Sterling Heights Stevenson, 45-33. Had a good defensive effort. Um, Kevin on Dighton had a big game at 11 points. Um, but I'm really concerned when you look at when they played UED Jesuit. They lost 71-47. That's a big concern for me. Um, yes, you got proven players. You got Brendan Wiley. You got um, Desmond Steffens. You got um, Blake Cozen. You got, um, you know, I mean, like, um, you got Cole Church here. I mean, I mean, like, you look at Clark. I mean, you're having a night now, obviously. But you look at the Wolves. I mean, like, you know, saying to yourself, that's a little unusual. You know, for them to only score 47 points. You know, for them to, score, to get blown out. I mean, like, that's not Clarkson-like. You know, but you got to look at Coach Tim Wasilic's team. I mean, like, it's a different team. I mean, it's a much different team they had. Obviously, Keegan Wasilic's not there anymore. I mean, like, you know, that's a big loss there. Um, bottom line is, you know, they're going to have to rebound a little bit. They're going to have to regroup a little bit. I mean, like, but I, but this is still Clarkson. I mean, this is still Clarkson. So, you know, with the Wolves, they're fine. I wouldn't press the panic button or anything yet. I wouldn't press it. I mean, I think they're going to be fine. Um, but it is a little unusual seeing what happened to McCallahan Hall against UD Jesuit. Um, really unusual for them. Um, I'd be very curious to see what happens to them going forward there. In the white, obviously the best team is Troy in there. Um, I like how Troy plays. Chase Kniper's been playing good basketball. Darius Whiteside has been awesome in playing good basketball. But the guards, I mean, Zach Pinoza and Mason Parker. Uh, Mason Parker's really been impressive in the first two games. Um, just have been impressed with them. Um, you know, when he, and I know Mason Parker really well. I mean, I know his dad very well. Um, I know Brady Park. I know Brody Parker is at Oakland right now. Um, Mason Parker, I'm really, really curious to see how he does. Good player. Um, really underrated player. I think nobody. I think he, I think he I think his play is gonna really gonna really get better go better go up and up from now. Um, you know I think Mason Parker is gonna be a name that a lot of people are gonna talk about um, going forward. I think for Troy and Coach Gary Fralick, um, really been playing good basketball with them. Um, just the way they've been playing, really impressed with. Um, West Bloomfield, um, they've been playing. They had a good win against Detroit Western. Um, Hard fought game, by the way. Really hard fought. Um, Mitchell C at 22. Um, they, I mean, they've got other balanced scoring as well. I mean, they've been really good. Um, yes, it's one game. You got to judge and buy, but it was a good win for West Bluefield there. Um, I like what Coach Ronald Jordan's done with that team. I'm getting them back in the thick of it, creating a family like atmosphere. Um, but West Bluefield right now, off to a good start. Very curious to see what happens to them going forward. Um, then there's Lake Orion. Uh, actually, no, let's go Bloomby Hills first. Um, Bloomby Hills off the 2 0 start. Um, Press winning against Romeo, 62 48. Then they beat Novak Christian Academy, 76 56. Um, Noah Adams has been averaging 33 points, 32.5 points a game in his two games. Um, I think he's going to be the key for Bloomby Hills this season this year. Um, Brendan Noel has been solid, CJ Jackson's been solid. Um, they got a freshman guard who's been really good as well. Uh, but when you look at Bloopy Hills, it starts and ends with Noah Adamchich. And that's going to be the key for teams this year um, playing the Blackhawks. You know what I mean? It's basically how do you guard Adamchich, you know what I mean, considering what he can do. Um, very curious to see what happens with that team going forward there. And there's Lake Orion. Um, Lake Orion off to a 2 0 start. Um, not really impressive offensively. Yes, they beat Oxford 50-37. It was a good win for them. Um, and then beating Seaholm in a defensive slugfest at Oakland University 35-23. Um, this team's going to be very good at defensively. Um, their defense is going to be as good as it takes them. 
I mean, obviously you got Nate Heverla, you got DJ Morrow, you got um, you got Blake Liddell. Um, Liddell had a really nice game against um, against Oxford and also against Seaholm. Um, I think when you look at Lake Orion, obviously the defense is going to be the key for their success because if they, because I don't expect this team to score maybe at least 60, 70 a night. I mean, like they could, they're more than capable of, but this team's going to be very good as, as long as their defense takes them, takes them there. And I think their defense is very good. I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, like, I think their defense has been really good. Um, they rebound well. Um, <clears throat> they they got some size. I like Hayden DeGreffin Lee at the um, four spot. I, I like, um, you know, coming out the bench. Um, I mean, Kawhi Fly starting, I think the, I think that's been a very pleasant surprise for Lake Orion. Um, you know, for me with the Dragons, it comes down to outside shooting. I mean, that's the big question mark, and I think that's going to be the question mark for Lake Orion is if they can get the outside shooting, you know, to go with that dominant inside play, I think it's a very dangerous team. I mean, in Coach Jose Andrade, he's got a really good dangerous team, you know, but they got to play inside out, and I think that's going to be the key for them um, this whole season. And then Groves is off to a good start. I mean, 2-0, and um, dominant against Avondale, dominant against some Redford Thurston. Um, Jacob Watson's been playing really good basketball for Coach Mark West. He had 19 against them, and he had 19 against Avondale. Um, I think Groves is, a, is another team. I think it can make some noise, especially with the new coach. Um, so when you look at it here, Groves right now looking really good. And then there's Farmington. Farmington's much improved as well. Um, they're one and one. They're coming off a, a good win the other night. Um, they had a tough loss to Hanover Pioneer. Um, but Farmington much improved. So when you really look at the white this year, it is much improved. I mean, everybody in the division's got at least a win in that division. And that is that tells me that I think the white could be really competitive this year. I really do. I mean, yes, Troy's a favorite. Yes, you got Bloomfield Hills there. You got Groves and Lake Orion are also there. West Bloomfield's there. Um, you know, Farmington, they can have a case. You know what I mean? I think there's going to be some really good competitive basketball in this division. Um, and then let's go to the blue. Obviously, when you look at the blue, um, you really got to look at Stony Creek coming off a really tough loss. Where they blew an 18 point lead to New Bachmore, Anchor Bay, 62 60. Um, Peyton Rumbler had nine points. Um, this committed to a Messiah University. University. Um, um, and then you have um, Trey Walker. And then Aiden Grosco had 16 points for the Cougars in their loss. Um, I think Stony Creek is fine. I'm not going to press the panic button on the Cougars. Um, but you just can't blow an 18 point lead and expect to win. You know, that's going to be. You know, but I know the the job that Coach um, Jeff Owens got got in front of him. Obviously, Stony Creek really struggled last year um, just to get him back on track. You know what I mean? Just to um, but they look they're going to be fine. I wouldn't press the panic button on Stony Creek um, right now. I really wouldn't. Um, then there's Rochester. Can't judge them yet. They haven't played a game yet, so can't judge the Falcons yet. Um, and then there's um. There's Berkeley. Of course, um, Berkeley, after losing to Troy, Coach Joe Sermon went on Twitter, called himself out, apologized to his, apologized about the effort of his team. Um, you know, he, when he did that, you know, I thought that was really, I thought, you know, that was the right message. You know what I mean? You know, he laid the blame on himself, not the players. And I think that was a really good thing that he did on Twitter. Um, and then they went out and um, knocked off, um, I, they went into Detroit and knocked off. I got to remember East English Village Prep, 54 45. Um, Tamir Rekovich had 20 points. Um, they, um, they, he called, Coach Thermo called himself out and his players and his team delivered. I mean, you know, that's a good thing for them. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I got to give Coach Joe, Joe Sermo a lot of credit. I got to give him praise, a lot of credit for what they, for what he did. He called his team, I mean, he called himself out. Um, and then his kids delivered. Um, I really like where Berkeley's at right now, even though they're one and one. Um, I think they're going to be fine. Tim Rekovich has been really good. Um, I'm curious to see who the second and third secondary scoring, who the third score is going to be. Um, really curious to see what happens there. Um, 
And then you look at, um, and then Royal Oak thought to a 2 0 start. I mean, like, do they prove they belong? I mean, like, they've been battle tested. I mean, they had some good wins. They, were, they blew out Frazier. They rely a lot on three guys um, Dylan Hoffman, um, Davis Arbeiter, and um, Clark Camden. Um, they both, they've all three have really been playing good basketball for Coach Aaron Smith. Um, off to a good start with them. Um, off to a, um, they're 2 0 right now, looking pretty good. I'm very curious to see what happens when they go deeper into the season um, with them. Um, then there's Oxford. Oxford's off to an all one start. Tough loss to Lake Orion, 50-37. I think the answer for Oxford's perfectly simple. They got to get tougher. Um, when you look at the game against Lake Orion, Lake Orion clearly out-toughed them. Um, Rebounding-wise, Lake Orion dominated the glass. Um, and another thing with Oxford, you just can't rely on Jake Champagne to carry you. Yes, he had 23. I mean, but you gotta these gotta have help. You know what I mean? Obviously you look at do you look at Dominic Cassisi? Do you look at obviously you got him you got Bo Tate there, you got I mean like they've got to get some help for for Jake Champagne, but for Champagne also, you know what I mean? You know, there's gonna be a lot of people who are gonna be paying a lot of close attention to him. And bottom line is, you know, when you look at Oxford, you know, you know, who knows? I mean like Oxford's going to likely need one of the Katie boys to step up, obviously, in the interior. Um, and I think for Oxford, it's just getting mentally tough. <laughs> I mean, Coach Steve Laidlaw said it to my prep zone at the Lost Lake Orient. They just out-toughed them. They just out-toughed us. That's really what the bottom line was. And for Oxford, the case for them is they got to play, they got to play tough basketball. That's the case for them. Really is. Um... Troy Athens, they're coming off a tough loss to Troy. Um, Troy Athens, yeah, they look good against Warren Cousineau, winning 61-52. Then they had the tough loss to Troy. Um, with the Red Hawks, Brooke Woodrum inside has been really solid for them. Um, <laughs> so was Kylie Harper. Um, I just think for Coach Dave Scott, they're fine. I mean, I'm not pressing the panic button on Troy Athens. Nothing yet with them. I think they're going to be fine. And then there's Seaholm. I mean, Seaholm's coming off a tough 0-2 start where they lost in the buzzer beater to um, South and Arson Tech. And then Lake Orion, they lost them in a defensive struggle. Um, so when you look at Seaholm, obviously without their two top players, um, I know they're going through some internal issues right now. Um, but if you're Seaholm, obviously, you know, there's some things you got to fix. Um, obviously, scoring's going to be in a big time issue for them. Um, then you got to look at defensively. Um, you're very good defensively. You're still scrappy. Um, I, I if you're Seaholm, you got to fix some things. Um, I think leadership one thing's got to be addressed a little bit with them. Um, but you've got to put the ball in the basket, and I think that's where I think Seaholm struggles, especially inside in the interior. Um, they did not. I mean, like, they didn't score a point in the third quarter against Lake Orion. They scored eight points in the second half. Um, <laughs> and you can't do that if you expect to win. So a lot of concerns with Seaholm right now to address. So that's something to really talk about with them. Um, when I look at the blue right now, I still think Stony Creek's the best team in that division. Followed by Rochester, Berkeley, Oxford, um, Royal Oak. I think Royal Oak's really impressed me. Um, followed by Troy Athens and Seaholm. Um, we'll see what happens going forward there in that division. Um, let's go now from the blue to the gold. Um, you know, when I look at this division, yeah, Southfield Arts and Tech's coming off a couple good wins against, um, I think Southfield Arts and Tech has really improved. I mean, clearly they're only, they, their only loss was a two point loss. Um, and it was a tough one too, but they've been rolling. And I think a lot of that goes to the experience. Obviously, obviously, having a new coach in there, Terrence Porter. Um, and he, I know what he brings to the table with Southfield Arts and Tech. I mean, like, but they're off to a good start. Um, Harper Woods, you know, coming off a couple tough loss. I mean, they came off a really tough loss, but they bounced back. Um, defensively, they look really good. Um, I think when you look at Harper Woods defensively, I mean, this is a team that looks the part. I mean... Yes, they've been battle tested. They've been they've been playing good basketball, obviously. 
Um, but the bottom line is, I think defensively, this is a team that, you know, if they defend, this is a good team. And I think Coach Tawan Porter has really seen this. You know what I mean? The last two games against some good competition. Um, I think for for me what about Harper Woods is defense is going to be the thing that carries him. Because if their defense can carry him in games, they're going to be just fine. If they go into high-scoring octane games, I think that's where they're going to have some problems. And when I look at the um, Pioneers right now, this is where the direction I think they have to go is defense first. And that's something that, you know, the offense will come later. You know what I mean? Usually, what I learned in term basketball with them is usually defense always travels. Offensively, you know, sometimes you have good nights shooting the ball. Sometimes you have bad nights shooting the ball. Or if you go inside and you miss layups, you know what I mean? That always happens. But, but your defense always travels and it keeps you in games. And I think that's a, I think that's a great recipe for Harper Woods to follow. Um, Harper Woods, I'm mean, sorry, Fernandez University. Um, I am really impressed with with Coach, with Coach Josh Nix has done with this team. Really impressed. Experience matters. They have they've been battle tested. They've won tough games. They've been a ton of close games. I mean, it is time for me to buy the the Eagles. I am. I am an Eagles believer. I am a believer what Coach Josh Nix has done. He has done a wonderful job turning this program around. I will tell you what right now. Do not be surprised if the Eagles are in the gold conversation as we get later into February. I am really high on this Ferndale University team. They are good. They are very good. They got a player in Chris Kendricks I'm really excited about. I mean, they they are, and they got they got proven experience as well. I mean, this team is going to be very very good. You just watch. You know, they've been battle tested. I mean, like they can make some noise. I really like the direction. I really like where Fernandez University is at right now. I really do. Um, then there's Avondale. I mean, Avondale's coming off a really tough loss. Um, the other night, six seven six five to Novi. They're off the one and two start. Um. There's time. They look good. I mean, they look good early. They um, blew out War and Mott. Um, then they lost the Groves. It was a tough one for them. Um, but then they had the tough loss to Novi. I think Avondale's fine. I'm not going to press the panic button on them. I'm not going to, you know, going to say all this, like, hoopla, like, Titan panic. I'm not going to say that with them. Because I think Avondale's fine. Because I think the Yellow Jackets can be a team that can turn things around quickly. And they got the pieces to really do it. Um, so we'll see what happens um, with them. And then there's Pontiac. Um, how do I explain Pontiac? Because they just went out west of Holland and lost that one. To me, with Pontiac, it comes down to your first game of the year to, against Lincoln King Academy, you lose 75-61. And then you really have not, You've been good defensively the last two games, but you haven't been able to score. And that's a big issue for Pontiac, for Coach Jamin O'Neill. That is a big issue. Because if you can't score and win, if, if you can't score, you're not going to win games. That's really what it, the issue is going to be with, with Pontiac. I mean, obviously with the Phoenix, I mean, like it's going to come down to is can you find enough offense to fix your problems? I mean, that's the issue I have with Pontiac. When you look at the division you're in, you know, obviously you look at a team like Southfield who's improved. You look at Harper Woods who I think's improved. You know Ferndale University's improved. And Avondale, you know, yes, they're, they're one and two, but I think they're a deceptive one and two. So if you're Pontiac right now, you're in a really tough spot because when you look at the Phoenix, you know, this is a team that obviously got Damian Hall there. But you got to get some things addressed. You got to get some things fixed. You got to figure out what type of team you want to be. Do you want to be an offense first team or do you want to be a defense first team? That's the that's the issue that I have with Pontiac. I mean, that's the question for Coach Damon O'Neill. If he can get this thing addressed, you know, and, and you say, you know what? We can be both these teams. You know what I mean? We can be both an offense first team and both a defense first team. That's going to be where I think that will address Pontiac's issues. I mean, like, it clearly looks like Right now, when you look at the teams right now that are clearly, you know, the top teams right now, they've got an identity figured out, and some others have not. So, 
you know, so there's a lot to address. I mean, obviously, when you look at the season um, coming up from the opening week of the year, obviously, um, you know, when you look at, obviously, you got some more tournaments coming up this weekend. Um, really, but when you look at clearly, when you look at the top teams in the um, right now, I mean, like, in the rankings, it's clearly there um, when you look at the rank. So my final thoughts of the week, um, actually some interesting games of the week to keep an eye on. Um, obviously, Adams and Troy, that'll be really interesting to keep an eye on. Um, you got, there's some good ones also there too. North Farm taking on Novi Detroit Catholic Central. Um, Novi Detroit Catholic Central, much different team, but they've looked really good. Um, North Farmington, we know they've been rolling. Um Obviously, you got a couple other good ones too. You got, I think Groves and Oxford's a really interesting game, especially with Groves um, going up to Oxford. Um, the last time Groves went to Oxford, remember football, of course, that was when Groves was, um, Groves fell to Oxford in that one. Um, so I'm very, that'll be a really interesting coaching matchup too between them, Coach Mark West and Steve Laidlaw. Um, and then, you know, other games that are key, are interesting, also Lake Ori and Clarkston. Um, Adams and Troy, um, curious to see how, um, you know, how, um, how the Colts will guard, um, bro, will guard, um, Brady Prescorn, um, other matchups, you know what I mean? Like you got, you got Adams, Lake Ori, and that'd be really interesting as well. Um, but a lot of interesting matchups looming this week around the boys docket. Um, if I didn't name your, any man, interesting matchups, I apologize for that. So. We'll see what happens going forward here. Um, you know, we'll see what happens going forward here. Um, my final thoughts of the week, of course, we're right in the thick of basketball season right now. Um, can't believe we're a couple more day, a couple more weeks until the start of Christmas and start of New Year's, and we're gonna we're right there. Um, we'll see what happens. All right, everybody, I'm gonna sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. I posted, of course, the top um, 23 and also the thoughts um, on both boys and girls basketball. Also, we got in the, um, also we got, um, you know, it's also on the ONTV blog as well. I will um, post a link to that. So we'll see what happens going forward there. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Um, take care. God bless. And I will see you all next week, everybody.